Avery Cal, 12ers. All right, so we've got a little bit of a different style lesson today. I wanted to show you something interesting, and you'll get what the pun is about uh, pretty quick, I think, here. Um, one thing I'm just going to mention, this is also a little bit of a test to see who is paying attention to the videos. So there is an actual assignment going with this video, and you definitely need to watch the video to get the assignment. Somewhere later in the video, I'm going to tell you very specifically what it is I want you to do. And yes, it's for marks. So please pay attention because you've got a very specific thing. And I'm going to tell you somewhere later in the video. Don't worry, I won't hide it too much. But I want you to watch the whole thing. Okay, so something interesting here. We've talked about uh, exponential functions a little bit. Now I want to show you something that's really, uh, really important in math. So first of all, a really simple, basic uh, overview here. Taxes and investing are both two things that rely on putting some money into something and uh, paying a little more or getting a little more. So let's just say, for example, someone gives you a hundred bucks and you can go ahead and you can spend that hundred bucks at the store or you can invest it. Both things are going to have a similar effect in how they, uh, the price changes due to tax or interest rates. So let's say I go to a store and I want to buy something. The total cost of whatever I buy is going to be the cost of the item, which in this case is going to be 100 bucks. And then let's say we're going to pay some tax. Tax, uh, let's just call it 5% because that's pretty typical for GST. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay $100 for the item and then I'm going to pay the tax extra. This should not be a surprise to you. The way we calculate this is very simple. We don't think of 5%, we think of 0 0.05. So what we're going to do, if I want to calculate my tax, this is all simple calculation, but I really would just want to illustrate a point here. We're going to take the cost of the item and we're going to multiply it by 0 0.05 and then add that. This is a little much. So what we're going to do here is we're going to factor out 100 and we're going to write it much more simply. So we're going to write 1 plus 0 0.05. Or in general, the total cost is going to be 100 times 1 plus the tax as a decimal. Okay, and that's how we can figure out how much we're going to pay. And by the way, of course, that's going to be $105. Something a little more interesting for you, har har har, is going to be when you take the money and you invest it. So you can do something similar where you can take uh, a, an amount, let's say you put all $100 in the bank because you're a good boy or girl, and you want to invest it at some interest rate. So let's just pick a number here. Let's say the interest rate, uh, I mean, today it's not going to be this much, but let's just say maybe that's also 5%. What you're going to wind up ending up with is you're going to have a similar calculation here. You're going to take your amount, which by the way, this can also be called the principal, uh, you're going to take your principal, multiply it by the interest rate, and add it to what you had. And very similarly, you're going to have 100 times 1 plus 0 0.05. Or in general, you're going to take the amount you have and multiply it by 1 plus whatever the interest rate is. So I would be the interest rate. So the way that banks calculate interest rate is uh, they can give it to you at the end of every year or they can give it every six months or three months or weekly or daily or whatever. And the rate at which they give you the interest is going to have an effect on how much money you get. So just as an example here, I'm going to show you on this timeline, if you take 100 bucks and you invest it after one year, if they are going to pay the interest annually, that means at the end of every year, once, one time per year, then what you're going to wind up having is after one year, you're going to have 100 bucks, and they're going to multiply that by one plus whatever the interest rate is. And after two years, they're going to take the same amount, so they're going to take 100 times one plus i, which is what you had after one year, and they're going to multiply that amount by one plus i. And then same thing after three years. And of course, you can see what's going to wind up happening here is you're going to wind up having them multiply by this growth factor, this one plus i, and they're going to do it as many times as years. So this is going to turn into a formula real quick. This is going to become uh, 100 in the beginning, one plus i to the power of zero, which is like nothing, uh, 100, one plus i to the power of one, this is 100 times 1 plus i to the power of 2.
2, and so on. So this is what happens if you get your interest compounded annually. And if we want, we can actually work this out. So let's say just for fun, let's actually work out the number um, at a 5% interest. You would wind up having, after three years, you can have 100 times 1 plus 0 0.05 to the power of 3. And whatever that number is, is whatever you're going to get. So what we can do, and I'm just going to jump over to Desmos here, and let's just calculate it, 100 times 1 plus 0 0.05, and we'll raise that to the power of 3. So after one year, you'd have 105. After two years, you have 110.25. You're getting a little more the second year because you're getting interest on your interest. And then after three years, it's 115.76, so $115.76. Now, they don't have to compound it annually. They can actually compound it a little differently if they like. They could compound it. Let's change color. They could pay the interest. Uh, let's go with semi-annually. I always get confused whether it's biannual or semi-annual, but let's just say two times per year. Okay, so in this case, you're not going to get paid every year. You're going to get paid every six months. So you're going to have an interest period that's more frequent. Now, the thing what they do here is if your interest rate is 5%, they're going to cut your interest rate in half. So what your rate, it's going to be 5%, but they're going to divide it by 2 because you're getting it twice a year. So you get 2.5%, but it's going to be every 6 months. And what winds up happening here is in the beginning, you're going to have this. The calculation is going to be take your interest rate and divide it by 2 because you're getting it 2 times per year. So but once you hit one period, this would be called a compounding period, they're going to apply this multiplier, this growth factor, and they're going to apply it one time at six months. And then after one year or 12 months, you're going to have that same amount, and they're going to uh, multiply it by the growth factor. It's going to be a second time. So this is going to be i over 2 to the power of 2, and then here it's going to be 100. 1 plus i over 3 to the power of 3, and so on. So you can kind of see what's going to happen here. In general, well, whoopsie, whoopsie doodle, whoopsie doodle, I'm getting carried away here. It's still i over 2, right? You're still getting 2.5%, but the exponent's growing. So what you're going to end up with at the end is you're going to end up with a smaller percentage or a smaller interest rate, but more multiples of it. So what's going to happen to your total amount in this case? 100, if it was 5%, would be 100 plus 0 0.05 divided by 2. But you're getting it six times after three years because you're getting two compounding periods per year. So if we jump over to Desmos, we can just have a little look here, compare. This is 100 times 1 plus 0.5 divided by 2, but this is going to be to the power of 6. Are you going to get more or less money? And in this case, you can see you get a little bit more, 1 115.97, uh, so $115.97. All right, so the reason why you're getting more money is fairly simple. Your money is growing a little bit faster. So after six months, you get some interest applied. And so the interest you have now, even though it's only cents, is getting interest on itself. So after a year, you're getting interest on the interest already uh, acquired at six months. So the interest is coming at you faster, so you're getting more time to grow it. And you can compare uh, what would happen if you changed it to something else, like maybe you went weekly, which means every week they're going to take your interest rate. It's 5% annual, but they're going to now divide it by 52 because you're going to get it 52 times per year, and it's going to be like bam, 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 bam. And you're going to wind up having every week it's going to be 100 bucks plus I over 52 and then you're going to have zero. After a year, I'm not going to write all the calculations, but this would be 100 
and you'll you'll have gotten one fifty second of your money fifty two times. So you're going to have that multiplying factor, and at the end here, you're going to wind up having one hundred times one plus i over fifty two. And then this would be uh, 52 times 3, I guess. I don't know, whatever that is. So 52 times per year times 3 years. So that's like, uh, well, let's actually do a calculation. So just to see here if it would make a big difference getting 5% weekly, uh, this would be 156, I believe. So one more just sample calculation here. And 100 times 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 52. But now this is going to be to the power of 152. Uh, you have, oh boy, oh Desmos, okay. So one thing about Desmos that you actually have to realize, and I was finding this out, Desmos doesn't deal with large numbers very well. It's actually telling me I get $115.73 how does that make sense? I should be getting more money this way. So Desmos sometimes isn't the best, and it's this guy to the power of 152. So I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to use a better calculator. Wolfram Alpha, 100 times 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 52, and then I'm going to raise that to the power of 156. And now De uh, Wolfram Alpha, sorry, gives me a better number. So I don't know why Desmos has that programming problem, but Wolfram Alpha definitely doesn't. This tells me $116.18. So I get 100 and, oops, $116.18. So by having it compound weekly, I'm actually getting quite a bit more money. I get 20, 20 cents more of that we can see the relative differences. So the whole point of all this is me telling you that compound interest, where it's happening on a uh, weekly or even you could have a daily basis, you get more money. So this brings me to the interesting part. I mean, this is all about the interest. And in fact, if you want to turn this into a formula, there is an actual formula. I'll write it down here. Compound interest. There's no interesting formula, okay, I'll stop using that line, where the amount you get as a function of time is equal to the amount you start with. You multiply it by 1 plus i over n times nt. Okay, this is an actual formula. This is the initial amount, initial amount. i is the interest rate. interest rate as a decimal. Uh, N is the number of compounding periods per year. And of course, T is the time in years. Okay. You can use this formula for all sorts of calculations, um, but there's just something I really want to show you, and we're going to use this formula to figure it out. Okay, so we're actually going to think about now a hypothetical situation in which you happen to take a whopping $1 and you want to invest it in a bank. But the bank you find is paying a remarkably high interest rate. So you're going to take your $1 and you're going to put it in a bank with an interest rate of 100%. Okay, this is not really realistic, but it's going to end up with an interesting result, so bear with me. So if we're going to compound it annually, what we're going to wind up having is we're going to get an amount where we take $1 and we multiply it by this growth factor. The interest rate is 100%, so that's 1. The number of compounding periods is 1, and you're doing it for 1 year. The calculation for this is very simple. It's common sense almost. 100% means you're going to get double your money, so you're going to end up with $2 at the end of it. But what if we wanted to compound it more frequently? What if this bank was offering weekly compounding? What we'd wind up having there is you'd wind up having our amount. We'd still invest the same amount. We're still getting 100% interest rate, but it's going to be divided by 52 because of 52 compounding periods per year. The good news is we're going to get it 52 times. So what do we wind up getting when we do this? 
If you go over to Wolfram Alpha, I uh, think this is better for these large calculations. We're going to type in 1 plus 1 over 52, and then we're going to write to the power of 52. And if I type this in, I don't even have to push enter, it's going to tell me that I'm going to have $2.69. So that's pretty amazing. The difference between compounding annually and weekly gives us quite a bit more money. We could even go better. We could go daily, perhaps. We could figure out the amount if you have 1 uh, over 365 for your interest rate, but 365 for compounding periods. So we can go to Desmos. Uh, sorry, Wolfram Alpha. Force of habit, 365, and now we're getting $2.71. Okay, that's not that much better, but it is better. So as you imagine, as we keep increasing the frequency of interest payments, we're going to get more and more money. We can have this daily, we can go hourly, we can go minutely, even secondly. In fact, if we keep going, we could have this so that the frequency of the compounding uh, interest periods, whatever you want to call it, it's, they're happening right, uh, right next to each other, like one after another. So you could have it milliseconds, or what we would say is you could have it continually, so that your interest is getting compounded continually. And this would involve saying 1 times 1 plus 1 over. And now we've got a bit of an issue, because we can't say we have an infinite number of compound periods. Uh, that's just not something we can calculate. So we're going to leave this as n, and we're going to write this as n. And what we're going to say is we're going to say as n goes off to infinity. So here is your assignment. Your assignment is to do the following. Figure out what is this limit? What is this amount of money we can get? Because you'll notice from going from weekly uh, or annually to weekly, we got quite a big bump from weekly to daily, we got a decent bump. Hourly, we're going to get an okay bump. But there is going to be a limit to this amount. Okay, You can't get infinite money with infinite compounding periods, even though it sounds like it might work. It just isn't going to quite happen. So this is a pretty important mathematical idea, because this actually has a lot of different applications. It's not just about interest rates. It's about anything that grows. This could be population, bacteria, whatever. Things that grow on a continual basis will be described by this sort of a relationship. And this relationship, as n goes to infinity, actually gets to be a very, very, very important number in mathematics. So what your assignment is, is the following. Go to Wolfram Alpha. Type in something like this. The beauty is here, you can type in this equation, and you can say that if x equals, and you can play around with different numbers. If x is 1, like 1 compounding period, you can calculate that, and you're going to get the number 2, okay? which is what we calculated. You can say if x is 52, you can then calculate, okay, well, we're getting some weird fractions, so that's not really super handy. But 365, you can define whatever you want x to be. So play around with it, whew, play around with it a little bit. I promise you, you it won't always give you fractions. Make x big, like, don't go too big, but try big. Push enter. The number you get from doing this is that magical important number, and it's going to be the upper limit. Similarly, you could go to Desmos, and you could try doing something like this, where you replace the 52s with x's and see the graph. You should actually see an interesting uh, kind of an asymptote situation. So the assignment is this. Go and do this. In the comments below, make a comment, and what you're going to answer the comment with, what you're going to write, is two things. You're going to write a number and a letter. So the number you are going to write, think of the first letter of your first name. If it's your legal name or common name, uh, just pick your common name, I guess, the one I would call you. Um, and when you go to Wolfram Alpha, you're going to generate a number that's going to be a big giant decimal. I'll give you a hint. It's going to be two point something, something, something. If your name starts with an A, you're going to write down the first decimal 
So the first digit after the decimal place. If your name starts with an X, you're going to write the 24th digit after the decimal and so on. So whatever uh, number corresponds with the letter of your first name, that's the digit you're going to write down. And this, the letter you're going to do, the second piece of information, the letter is you're going to do a little search on the internet. You're going to take that magical number that we're going to come up with and you're going to Google search that to figure out what the number is. Now you might even know what it is. I don't know, but you're going to figure out what it is. And uh, if you're having trouble doing the Google search, don't paste the entire thing. Like if you get 2.71159211, whatever it is, that's not it. But let's just say, if you're having trouble getting it, just copy maybe the first four or five digits and paste it in and you should be able to find what it is. So write down your favorite letter. And no, we're not talking about your name. So a number and your favorite letter, hint, hint, wink, wink. That's what this whole thing is about. It's about learning that very key thing in math here. That's what you're gonna post, okay? So that's gonna be five marks a total. It's worth marks. And I also wanna see who's keeping up with the YouTube videos. So watch this video, which you already have, I assume, and then you should be able to do the assignment. Okay, any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you later.